Right, I guess I'll hit the button, shall I? You shall. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. I actually remember to actually turn the heater off before we start podcast <laughs> so that it doesn't come through in the recording. <laughs> so Mike did help me build a, uh, uh, cut out a bit of, um, I don't even know what you'd call it. Um, it's kind of a foam, isn't it? I'm not sure. Kind of like insulating foam. Yeah. I guess it's the kind of stuff that you'd put under your, under your floorboards, isn't it? I don't know. Where'd you buy it? What was it? <laughs> I don't it's, know. It's mo- I think it's multi-purpose foam. Right. Bring it to Bunnings. And buy it, everything it's certainly Bunnings. very, it's like cutting it like butter with a fresh knife. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. And anyway, that was to cover up the hole in your shelving unit for your micro server. Yeah, so that our microphones don't pick up the sound that's bouncing around from it. Yes. They moved it into a shelf, and because it's only open on one side now, all the sound's kind of getting projected out into the room. Was that in your rack before? Yes, it was in the bottom. Because you couldn't hear it before? No, because it was like open on all the sides of the sound. Crazy. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the wonders of echoing. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff it right in my mouth. You can move it back if you want to sit back. Oh, that's probably a little bit better. Yeah. The problem might. is I, I can't actually lean uh, the chair back because because <laughs> yeah. my chairs are useless. No, it's just a it's just the type of chair it is. That's why there's two chairs in here because we bought one for me and one for Becky, but Becky doesn't like it because it doesn't lean back. I am. I agree with Becky. <laughs> I don't like it because <laughs> it doesn't lean back. <laughs> I'm I'm notorious for slouching in my chair and sort of cruise back and yeah. I hate those office chairs, which is basically, you know, swivel or up and down, that's about it. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, mine at work has no padding either. Really? Yeah. It's quite uncomfortable to sit on for eight hours. Oh, uh, well, don't sit on it for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> kind of considering buying a, uh, like, a gaming chair for work. Oh, yeah. Cause, yeah. Just because I spend so much damn time in it. I think we're going to have the same uh, problems last time. We're not actually really going to talk about the topic, are we? Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I haven't even. I haven't well, no, even wait, said, wait, 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 wait. Everything yeah. we say is about the tocket because it's going through a microphone. <laughs> and it's being recorded. <laughs> How many crazy ways can we work out to bring what we're talking about back to the topic? Anyway, welcome to Beware the Geeks, episode three. Yes. We got, um, we got about three and a half minutes in before I remembered that we hadn't actually introduced the show yet. <laughs> yes. So, a topic that I've kind of been learning a lot about over the past year or so is audio recording yeah your studio's grown somewhat yeah maybe a little (laughs) it kind of went from yeah let's do a podcast oh now i have all this gear i I must do a podcast to justify the expense (laughs) (laughs) business expense right there Uh, exactly (laughs) so what did you start out with uh i started out with a um a firewire mixer and that microphone and the Rode nt1 yeah um, and like a floor standing microphone stand and um, some headphones, and that was about it, and like a laptop with three copies of Skype printing on it. Okay, right. So a so the, the mixer, sorry, was a what? It was a, a Phonic Helix 16-channel uh, Firewire mixer, which right, is so it's, up yep. there. So it's a very sort of entry-level... Uh, I wouldn't call it entry-level. Well... Um, Entry level to sort of serious work, I guess. Yeah, and it kind of cheap and yeah. old, and but it worked. But I had to use a old Mac that I had because it needed fire wire. Fire port, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. And then I, about I don't know, six months ago, I tweeted, um, "Hmm, one day I'll get a digital mixer." <clears throat> and then about two hours, I went, "Oh, looks like that day is today." <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> it turned out to be a bit cheaper than I thought it was going to be, so I kind of just impulse bought it. Do you get um, afflicted with the old impulse buy thing, Dan? Not usually. Um, no, Dan still left his phone on vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do not disturb mode. Um, yeah, because I went online and went, oh, that's cheap. And then I got it, you remember where I got it, and went, yep. uh, but I have to use an iPad to control it, so let's go and buy the control surface for it as well. 
And then I went, well, actually, I can buy, like, the next model up for, like, an extra $200. So I returned both the mixer and the control surface and ended up with this <laughs> nice digital mixer that I have now that Mike is still learning how to use. It's actually very nice, but I, I did find the story quite amusing when you took it back and said but what you wanted to do. And I said, we could have told you that to start with, is that's what you'd want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it made the expense a little bit less painful because I kind of paid for it in, in like three lots. Yeah. So it was, it was psychologically, it wasn't as expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went and bought a new microphone and other bits and pieces and you've slowly built it up into a quite a functional studio. Yeah. And then I even, you know, got the got the old handsaw and the, the drill out and actually made quite a nice desk for it as well. Well, if I do the, the, the idea of so. you on a handsaw and a drill is quite scary, but <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it does look very nice. Partly because it's got black sheet covering all of the things that you've done with the handsaw and the drill, but <laughs> <laughs> which is exactly what I've done behind you as well with the. Um... I'm glad it's just not structural behind me. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not not structural. <laughs> Ah, yes, so, uh, and you've got uh, this very nice little studio you've got set up here with uh, in your front room of your house with a lot of um, packing foam, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> it is kind of purpose-made um, sound dampening foam. But it's attached to the walls in various ways. Um, staples, glue. Um, the, this one here is on a canvas. <laughs> um, Excellent. That one, the one on the door is also on a canvas, which is just hung on a picture hook. Right, oh, that works. Um, and then the ones around the top are just wedged. So are they are the angles and sort of is just to try and fill in the space, or do you have a bit of a play to see what helped deaden things? Uh, the most? It, it's it doesn't really make much difference. Oh, and there's some on the ceiling too. Oh, crux. There is two. <laughs> did you did you not notice that? Uh well. Maybe. <laughs> People don't look up. You should know that. Yeah, I know. Uh, you walk down the street and you, you should look up because yeah. the tops of the buildings that you're walking past have typically got some pretty amazing, yeah. um, you know, sculptures and, and architecture to them, which is quite worth looking at. So Yeah, no, people don't look up. Yeah, yeah. and it's surprising they don't look up by much. It's mostly round about head height is all they see. Yeah. So. But yeah, because, yeah, I've got some wedged and I got a bit of a fright earlier because one fell. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah, it's sitting behind me. I'll need to put it back up. But I'm trying not to put too many permanent holes in this house. Because <laughs> we're not planning on staying here forever. I think you're well past worrying about <laughs> permanent holes, Dan. <laughs> well, things like the rack will stay when we leave. But, you know, like random stuff in the middle of the room. Like the the sta- the beam behind you is all freestanding. Yeah. So that I can take it away. Yeah, so you've built a studio which is effectively disassemblable. It's not a yeah. not a not a purpose built room or anything. Mm. But uh, trying to deaden the sound with whatever methods you can. Yeah. And, uh, so you limit it just down to what the microphones pick up right in front of them, rather than the echoes around the room. Yeah, and that's why I have a uh, some very nice dynamic microphones, um, so that they you know, well, well, unidirectional dynamic one, microphones. One one very nice unidirectional dynamic microphone. The other one's pretty good, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a difference between a $500 microphone and a $200 microphone. Yeah. It's still, it's more than I was being on a microphone, but that's yeah, right. <laughs> they're, they're, both, they're still both sure microphones, and it's the, the, the SM58 is still pretty good. Yes. No, it is, definitely. But, but yeah, the one I'm using, the um, SM7B, is the one that you often see in, yeah, you know, like videos, radio studios, and things like that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's a pretty common radio podcast microphone. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, Michael Jackson's Thriller, the album, he sang into one of these. Oh, did he? Okay. Hmm. Um, so the room microphone, which is perched above us. Yes. What do you use that for? Um, so that's, you know, if, like, for example, I'm recording a podcast and Becky wanders in and stands over there and talks to me, I can flick the room microphone up and then you can hear that as well. Oh, so you can put her into the podcast when she doesn't really want to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of gives you a lot of the room tone as well. Um, I... Didn't know you were going to ask me about it. Otherwise, I would have put a track in the recording so I could pl- put it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But yeah. It, and it's just, you know, we're talking about audio recording, so you've got a nice setup here and hmm. some microphones into your preamp, out of the preamp into the mixer, mixer, yep. which your computer is recording from the mixer over... USB. USB. Yep. 
So was it the USB 2 or 3? Or? USB 2. USB 2. Yep, so it pulls in 32 channels of audio across USB 2. At what sample rate? Uh, 48 kilohertz. And it can pull all of those in all at once at 48 kilohertz? Yep. Okay, so that's basically maxing out the USB 2? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we have these nice little boxes beside us, which we plug headphones into. Right, uh, and why are you doing that? Because I, I don't understand. They've got a microphone port on them as well, but you're not using that. No, so the main thing I'm using it for is a mono to stereo converter. Um, because if you plug yeah, the headphones straight into the board with, you know, right. three and a half to a six yep. and a half adapter, they don't always, you don't always get both channels. Okay. Because um, I'm doing pretty much everything in mono. Okay. Um, so so, yeah. so you meant mono to... Mono to stereo. Oh, right. So we're actually putting the same mono channel into both ears. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, and it has a 6.5 and a 3.5 mil jack, so you can plug either... If you know someone brings their headphones like you have occasionally, you can plug them in. Yeah, that, that makes it nicer. Yes, very yeah. good. And then you can you know set your own volume as well. Right. So, But if, if you weren't... Uh, when would you put your microphones into them as well? Uh, the... The reason the microphones can go through is then you can control how much of yourself you hear. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but we don't really care about that because your mixer takes care of that for us. Or yeah, because the way it, by putting it through the mixer and then sending it to the headphones, you get the gated, EQ'd, compressed sound rather than the raw sound. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So that's why I do it that way. So it's basically just a fancy little interface, which yeah. means you, rather than running a a long cable for, with an adapter on the end for your headphones, you've just got a, a, a place to plug it in. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. No, the other thing I really need is cough buttons. <laughs> <laughs> what, to play a fake cough? or to... <laughs> No, no to, to mute when you cough. <laughs> oh, you're just looking away. That works. Yeah. But, oh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly a very functional little studio, and, and so that's one part of audio recording. Um yeah, is, you know, getting it onto it and, yeah, and then I guess you've got the recording as well the, on the computer using Reaper. All right, so how does the, how does the USB appear to the computer? Does it appear as mul- it's, multiple it's, sound cards? Or? As multiple sound cards. Well, not as one sound card with 32 ports on it. Right, okay, so then Reaper's opening that sound card and recording from these different inputs. Yes. Okay. So there's a um, basically a low-latency audio framework called um, ASIO. Okay. Uh, is it ASIO or AISO? I can never remember. Yeah, audio stream input output. Okay. Um, which is basically a sound card driver protocol for digital audio. So, because a sound card in the generic sense is actually doing the analog to digital and digital analog on the card, but this is more lower level in that it's just an interface to be able to get that raw stream from the from the mixer. Yeah, because it's digital mixer, as soon as it goes into the mixer, it's analog to digital straight away right so you're not bothering with any conversions at all in the laptop you're basically taking the stream directly as the mixer's recorded it and saving it to a file that's right okay yeah. so the stream that the mixer's sending out is effectively already a wave file or what i'm not exactly sure um it's yeah so the asio is is the protocol okay um is the the codec and everything that the yeah the Driver understands, and then the driver turns it into audio that Reaper right, understands. Right, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it, the computer's more or less just a, a glorified recorder than more yeah. than anything else. Is It's not doing anything spectacular with it. It's just saving what's coming to it. Yeah, exactly, which is, yeah, yeah less work for the computer. And it, yes, absolutely. Yeah, because it's coming, it's pretty much digital as soon as it hits the mixer to, you know, it hits our listeners' ears, basically. Mm, that works. Which, you know, keeps the quality up as well. Um, yeah, digital mixer, very, very nice to have. Um, basically, it's just a whole bunch of ports, and you can do whatever you want with those ports. Yeah, right. You've tried to explain this to me and draw pictures for me. I just don't get it. it <laughs> I mean, if I was doing it more often, I'm sure I'd be able to learn it. But, you know, the the inputs and the outputs and the mappings and the this and that, it's, it's fairly advanced. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of... Uh, it's like trying to give you a blank canvas that's functional to do whatever you want with, right? Yeah, pretty much. So instead of like the analog mixer where, you know, have the traces on the circuit boards where right. you know, input goes to output and you can't change that. Except for having patch leads at the back or something yeah. like that, which... Yeah, or, you know, turning it down on a, a certain auxiliary output right, or right. things like that. With this, it's completely... Uh, it's, like, it's pretty much a matrix 
of you know you have your inputs on one side and your outputs here and yep. you go boom so, so, that so input, for the people that can't see what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and and inputs down this down the side of your matrix and your outputs along the top and you can yeah. put little check boxes and say this one goes here and this one goes here and, yes right yeah 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 basically so yeah it's incredibly functional and use that for things like um mix minus um so it's pretty much what it sounds like see so it's a mix minus something um so for example skype i'm kind of looking at you in a blank stare here you need to yeah. explain more <laughs> so when you're talking to someone on skype with a mixer right. you want to send all the audio back to them except for themselves ah right yes okay because yep. if you send themselves back they'll hear themselves back delayed yes that's an interesting thing have we talked about this before that's really cool if you take a recording of yourself well actually you record yourself speaking and play it back to yourself with a I think it's like two second delay or it might be one and a half second. Actually, it might even be like half a second. You can get about four words in and then your brain just gets completely confused. That's you, a, you have to do it live. That's right. You'd live, yeah, yeah. So you have a microphone and you delay it that's back, right. while you keep talking and you get mixed up. But it's completely fascinating. You, you, you do it to people. I've, I've listened or watched videos or, you know, listen to other podcasts when people do it. And the person starts talking and the... the the, 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 yeah, uh, can't do it. The can't, your brain just can't process it. It's hearing what you're saying, but it's delayed, and the brain yeah. is yeah, very crazy. Yeah, so it really messes you up. So that's what mix minus is. So it's the mix minus your own audio. Right, okay. Yeah, so that's something that you can do really easily with a digital mixer because you just say, well, I don't want that Skype right. channel to go back out to Skype. Okay. So you've got a special output that you use for your Skype, which does that. Yeah, well, it's just another output. Yep. Yeah. But, no, it's, it, but it's pre-wired into whatever computer's got your Skype connection. Yeah, so it's yeah. just an output that goes back out to Skype, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah but it's all mostly mono. The only things I'm running in stereo are the monitor speakers. Okay. Um, the sound from the music playing computer and mm, the audio going out to one of my Skype machines. Okay, so that means that are you releasing a podcast with a left and a right channel just the same? Or do you Okay, so it is it is stereo, but with the same audio on both channels. Apart from the music. Right, so things that are stereo are going out stereo, but you're not actually broadcasting a single channel podcast. It's, That's right. it's left and right, but with the same audio. So Correct. It, it's effectively mono, right? Yeah, it's mono, but coming out both, both speakers. Yes. Yeah. I remember the first time I listened to... Um, uh, Queens, now I'm here, and yeah. and the first time hearing like on a proper properly set up stereo, hearing the actual sorry, excuse me, so hearing the left and right parts of the dialogue, it, yeah, and it's just wow, that's really cool. But that was sort of when you know stereo was kind of a, still a new thing. There's actually a radio ad at the moment. I'm talking about like tired drivers and things, and they're actually using the left and right to like. They go to the right and they say, talk to the driver. And then they go to the left and talk to the passenger and say, like, now passenger. And it's like all the way to the left. Right. Your job is to, you know, help the driver. And then goes to the right and says, now driver, your job is to, you know, drive the car and let the passenger take care of everything else. And it's right. actually kind of a cool effect. And it is quite impacting. Because uh, something like that draws your attention. So yeah. then you go, what's going on here? And then you listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite cool. Uh, yeah. A lot of. Some podcasters will push one person all the way to the left and one person all the way to the right. So you hear one person in each ear, and that's really distracting because it's like you're like bouncing between a conversation with people standing on either side of you. Yeah, it, yeah, that that doesn't seem right. It, it'd seem better if you were um, on, on in the, in the middle and they were both both talking at you in front of you. So yeah, yeah. Well, what you can do is kind of very slightly pan them left and right, and that does help follow the conversation yeah um but not lots but i don't do it at all um yeah um what else can we talk about kind of this is kind of just turned into talking about my studio i have oh, but it's audio recording so yeah. <laughs> i don't need to do a studio tour but i'm waiting for the rest of my lights to arrive so this is a, a video tour you mean or video maybe photos with audio not sure thanks for that dan I'm all on my own. <laughs> Apparently, I'm entertaining you. You do. How often do you do that? 
So what I said to Mike as I walked in is that it's actually really hard to talk to an empty room. Um, I've done a few solo podcasts and it's actually hard to not have someone, you know, feeding back and responding to what you're saying. Yeah, um, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. I yeah. just, you walked out, I was like, eh, I'll just twiddle my thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'll wait for him to come back and Dan can cut that out. We'll put in some elevator music in, in the middle. Yeah. Um, I might talk about Cast a bit more, which is the browser-based um, recording for podcasts. Okay. Because um, it's actually, it's really cool how it, you know, yeah, avoid all the latency issues and everything like that, and it just records locally, which is, you know, the best audio quality you can get because um, it's not transferring over, streaming it over the internet in real time. So your your browser's doing the recording but storing it locally on your computer. And then it uploads it. So is it using the browser cache effectively and mm-hmm. or right okay, and then yeah okay yeah so basically it takes two streams of audio from you one that it sends to all the other participants right um which is you know kind of lower quality but enough so that you can understand each other yeah and then one that's full quality which it records to your browser cache and then pushes it up to the server oh it sounds um, very functional and and like a good idea yeah and then you just get you know mp3s for each person and drop it into reaper or whatever and record and edit it from there okay so however you need to be very clear to the person you're talking to 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 tell them to leave their browser window open to let it finish uploading or does it start uploading it while you're talking it uploads while you're talking so it's it keeps because you know them dropping out doesn't matter it can use their upload bandwidth to upload the audio at the same time right um but so it usually yeah. finishes shortly after they very shortly after yeah. So while you you know you're doing your debrief and you're chatting, it generally pops up and says all uploads completed. Right, or you can use that debrief time to because then if it doesn't come through, you can ignore the debrief which didn't go up or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mike's just picked up a ground loop isolator. It was annoying me. It was sitting right there, and I just wanted to play with it. So I thought I'll put it out of the way so I can't. <laughs> that's something that's quite important in audio recording is ground loop isolation. And putting your hands in your pockets when and you can't fiddle pockets. with things. Yeah. Because <laughs> any little, you know, noise on the tables and... <laughs> yeah, so there's, I have so many ground loop isolators in my audio chain because, you know, running audio from a computer into a mixer, you get that hum. Right. Um, because there's a difference in the ground or, you know, it's it's got multiple places to go to ground and because and then it ends up going around in circles between the ground of the right multiple devices and that's where you get that 60, uh, 50 hertz hum. Okay. Um, so a ground loop isolator is basically an audio transformer. So it turns the electrical signal into magnetic. And then back into electrical. And then yeah. back into electrical, but it electrically isolates the yeah. connection. So it's exactly the same way as your um, you know, AC plug into the wall isolating transformer works that you use to use your outside appliances, you know, your, your heat trimmers and things. It uh, turns the AC from the wall into a magnetic field, and then that magnetic field is turned back into um, electricity for you to use, but you are disconnected from the house wiring, mm. so you don't get um, zapped, basically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it, it's a little bit little bit different to that. You still can get, but it's, it's less likely that you'll get zapped from a fault that will, you know, normally, yeah. Mm. That's a discussion for another day. Perhaps we can get Renee to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> if we can. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, that's another thing. There's lots of little things, and you know, there's a constant <laughs> Mike's just clearing the desk <laughs> of anything that he could possibly fiddle with. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm a notorious sort of play fiddle thing. You know, the um, need to get yourself a fidget spinner. No, I would do not. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a fidget cube, a yeah. little fidget. You know, they look mm. pretty cool. But um, no, it's it's funny because. My my boss dro- gets driven up the wall by you playing with a pen while you're talking to him. He says, put it down. <laughs> so. What was I talking about? We are kind of talking about, oh, I was talking about ground loop isolation and all the other bits and pieces that you need in the audio chain to have the, you know, achieve your perpetual goal of uh, removing noise. Right. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've pulled my studio apart a couple of times because there's been a hum. Um, you notice that the microphones change colour? A couple of times. Yeah, maybe three times. Maybe how many times? <laughs> well, the most recent time was because I was changing the desk. 
You still haven't answered the question. <laughs> no, it's probably the only three or four times that I've done it. No, I'm sure it's probably half a dozen times now. No, I don't think so. <laughs> the microphone's a different colour. Did you paint it? The microphone cable's changed colour. Oh, well. So I, I replaced the cable. It was red, wasn't it? It was. Oh, so sort of, you can remember some things. Things that you don't pick up and don't look at. Yes, anyway. Yeah, the low quality cable was causing a harm on my Yes microphone. Yes. Hmm. So perhaps, I can, I perhaps I can put it back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the um, now that the hum's gone, it's a lot easier to edit. Indeed. And editing. So what do you do with editing? Um, editing's a really time-consuming process. That's the bit you hate doing, right? Yeah, because I have to listen to, <laughs> listen through two or three times um, for you know long silences or bits where you get, oh, we'll cut that bit out. Um, and things like that, and have to make sure that I don't leave any bits in where we're saying, oh, Dan can cut that out. <laughs> I left a few in on purpose. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've pulled some nice sound bites out too. Did you listen to that one that I sent you? I hate listening to my own voice. <laughs> I, I generally don't listen to them, but uh, I, I've been meaning to. I just And it, the reason why is that what you hear in your head is different to what you yeah. sound like coming out. Yeah. Um, and it's all to do with the fact that in your own head, you're hearing both your voice coming back to your ears, but also the vibration of your voice inside your head coming through your jaw to your to your mm. ears. So yeah. you sound completely different to what you can hear yourself saying to a recording of you, and that's why people don't like it. Yeah, um, you, get, you do get used you to it. You do get used to it. Um, I have become used to it after listening to the odd thing with you. but <laughs> Yeah, and you're also listening to yourself on your headphones. Yeah, that, that's more of a feedback thing for me to know that I'm actually being picked up and not sort of walked back to far back here. So you're, you're missing bits from me, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> but um, it's easier when I actually can hear my own voice. But if 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 I actually stop talking and the noise in my ears keep going, I'd hate that. So yeah. <laughs> that yeah. can't really happen the way this works. But anyway. No, well, I, I do have a fix. So I could probably put a delay on you. And then I won't be able to talk at yeah. all. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I have been known to rabbit on, yes. <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Put the Velcro down. <laughs> That's a fantastic audio sound to have to try and edit out, isn't it? Where's the end of it? Where's the end of it? There it is there. I'm going to just do this and go. <laughs> right, no, you know, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so editing is yeah pretty unpleasant, but you get you do get faster at it, and you get used to the sound of your own voice, which is potentially a positive. Um, yeah, so I go through edit for silence, edit for you know us messing up, or I'm you know, still trying to come up with something that's you know people liking the sound of their own voice, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that did occur to me as well. <laughs> but it's sorry, say again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then export it as a wave, upload it to Iphonic, which um, yeah, does all the things I mentioned in the last podcast. Um, does all the loudness, removes hum and noise, and l- normalizes the volume level so we sound the same volume. All right. Um, there's nothing worse than having one person at one volume and one at another because it just drives you crazy trying to listen to it or, you know, hum or anything like that. Just, yeah, I've, I will stop listening to podcasts because the audio is bad. Uh, I can imagine it's very easy to do. Um, yeah, you want to listen to something that's that's pleasant on the ears, and, mm. and I, I have to confess that I've stopped listening to one of the podcasts that you like because I actually just don't like the content. It's I'm, I'm not going to talk to you about it because <laughs> 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 I don't want to say which one it is, but um, it just the the content is doesn't grab me. But uh, different yeah. people, different you know, different folks, different strokes. The saying says, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like with video, the audio is not quite as important because you've got the video to complement oh, it. Oh, but, but it still annoys me when I've got to turn that YouTube video up and then it <laughs> goes on to the next one and I go deaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One day everyone will start using the loudness standards, but it's just so hard to get people to use a standard. Oh, why do I have to do that? It's more work. <laughs> well, do you want to keep your listeners? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's nothing worse than like listening to a podcast and then you know the next one auto playing and then suddenly you're ripping your headphones out <laughs> of your ears, yeah, <laughs> because it's just stupidly loud. You sort of get the 
a feeling there might be a cartoon effect there where the where the headphones by themselves come out like this, you know, and, yeah. and there's, 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 you know. <laughs> because it's so loud they've been pushed out, yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we, you know, once iPhonics finished, it uploads it to the web servers and you're, you pick it up from either the website or RSS feed or, you know, Pocket Cast, Overcast, yep. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn. There's so many different places to get podcasts. Google Play Music, Spotify. Yep, definitely is. There's and lots and you lots have and lots. to be everywhere. You do, because not everybody uses that that service that you like. They mm. like that service. So, yeah, absolutely, you got to be everywhere. However, I suppose that's not too difficult. And is there one sort of, you know, unifying hub place you can go to that you can configure to say, here's my episode, put it into all my other accounts? It's pretty much Apple Podcasts. Um, and the fact that things like Pocket Casts and Overcast and things like that pull from Apple Podcasts. Okay, right. Um, so there's not so much, a, you know, you put it somewhere and it uploads it to Stitcher and SoundCloud and everywhere. But but most of them pull most, from one other service. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and Ophonic, for example, you can tell it I want to upload to SoundCloud and YouTube and my web server and, you know, Libsyn and all these different places all in one hit. Right. Um, Because I upload the podcast to SoundCloud, to YouTube, and to my server. Okay. And to Dropbox for a backup. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Yes. Doing audio recordings, backups are very important because (laughs) there is no way you're going to repeat an audio recording exactly the second time around. That's right. And we have done that a couple of times, and I'm I'm sure it's not quite exactly the same when you when you edit it, and the the audio levels kind of sound a bit different. And yeah, exactly. Like, that's one thing you do notice listening to a podcast. I mean, one of the other ones that we both listen to, you can hear occasionally when he's uh, swapped out a bit. I just there's a hum coming through when I'm talking. Can you hear it? Yeah, it's just started. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> yeah, it's there nonstop now. It's because I turned the gate off. There you go. Oh, geez, that's loud. Sorry. <laughs> there you go, folks. That's the uh, the 50 hertz, 50 hertz hum. Now Dan's looking at me going, oh, what's happened? <laughs> oh, I can talk again. That's better. <laughs> oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. That was interesting. Anyway. Put my gate back on so I don't. <laughs> oh, that's better. I don't know. I, yeah. What did you break, Dan? I, I. Now I can't hear myself. What's going on? Uh, okay, there we go. I don't know what happened there. No, now I'm too loud. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Oh, well, it's back now. We're good now. Yeah, oh, seems to be. Uh, uh, gremlins in the system for a moment there. So, uh, how often do you have gremlins in the system, Dan? I think it's the first time I've had to like stop and go, what the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, there's my hum back again. Move your hand. And now it's gone. It's very strange. It is very strange. Microphone's also no longer pointing at your mouth. Is that better? It is. Oh, we'll just have to deal. Um, I think we're probably just about at the end of this podcast well, anyway. Probably, yeah, anyway. <laughs> ah, the fun. <laughs> Yeah, welcome, welcome to the world world of audio recording. Yeah, it's it, it's it's definitely something that is quite complicated if you're getting right down into the into the depths of many and very different things that you're doing with mixes and preamps and and uh, you know modifying sounds and equalizers and all sorts of things. But the very simplest effect, you know, just recording with a microphone into your into your phone or mm. into your tape player and stuff. The, the principles are pretty simple. It's turning some vibrating ear waves or ear into an electrical signal to do something with. And then, yeah, reversing the process and, um, you know, to pushing the vibrating ear back out to your ears so you can hear it. But as with all things that we humans develop, they tend to get a lot more complicated than that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> mixes and audio interfaces and preamps and yep. the internet. Oh, yes. whole other level. It was probably actually made things both more complicated and more simple at the same time. Yeah, that's true. Um, Yeah, it's definitely a lot easier, you know, someone can just pick up their smartphone, open voice recorder, voice memo app and record. That's right. Um, The the other side of 
of discussing things like that as well as you know it's sort of pushing towards having more recorded media than live media mm. um how, and those you know live media is still useful for your you know your sports definitely but yeah uh and it's not really any other way to do it because everybody kind of wants to know then and there who won so <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but you know having a show like this or others that you want to take the time to make a a, a really polished product then being able to edit and and you know do the recording which is the important bit because of course as we discussed in the last podcast which is a partner to beware the geeks of tech explainers we were talking a little bit about um, broadcast radio and recording so in the early years of radio back in the the 20s and and 30s 1920s 1930s you know <laughs> for you young fellas out there um the, the the first bits of of audio were broadcast only it was it was broadcast or recorded or not recorded sorry the audio was captured and then immediately converted and broadcast on the radio waves received by your wireless back then as they <laughs> called them um i remember i I I get a guilty pleasure of been watching Downton Abbey, which is uh-huh. actually a really good series. <laughs> I would never have thought of myself as actually someone who would say that, but it is actually quite quite good. Yeah. But they they actually had the radio a radio in there, and they were talking about getting a wireless, and then when, <laughs> and it turned up, and the and the technician was putting it together on the table in the middle of the great room, you know, because it's a big wow. show and everyone yeah, sits yeah, around yeah. it, and then someone said, "It's got an awful lot of wires for being called a wireless." <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> But uh, oh, that's good. And it, but it was true, you know. But yeah, the, the 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 wireless part of it was the the signal coming in was yeah. the was the radio side of it. Yeah. Um. And and that was it was interesting because you know the stuff being recorded. Well, sorry, captured is a probably better term because it's not recorded for playback. It was recorded for immediate transmission, and it was wasn't saved. Um. And that's the way it was done for many, 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 many years until such time as recording methods became reliable enough to record what was being transmitted. And it was Mm. the same with TV. I mean, TV was live only for a very long time until, uh, you know, a a reliable method of recording for playback was uh, developed. I'd have to look into the history of that, but I suspect that would be somewhere in the 60s or 70s, was it, perhaps? I have no idea. (laughs) Uh, I, I'd, I'd have to go and look because I all I know is that that's the way it was, but I can't remember exactly the dates and things. But you know, the old black and white TV days was all uh, was all live. Yeah, so, way back in the start of the television era. Yeah, and when you know TV shut down overnight. Oh wow, I remember that. You know, good night Kiwi. Yeah, <laughs> we have to. If, if we do a TV episode at some point to talk about how TV works, well, yeah, probably I don't think it's on our list. We probably should put it there. No, it's not. Um. We have to talk about uh, Goodnight Kiwi and, and things like that and the test messages and... Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, I, that was actually wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things. It was somewhere in the 90s, wasn't it, that they... Yeah, and Prime used to shut down even like five or six years ago overnight, I think. But it's it's quite... When you think about it, it's, it's a lot of work to do to to generate content and have it automatically scheduled and queued up to play when people aren't there. Well, I'm sure probably there are people, you know, hanging around in the studio just to yeah. monitor things. But, um, you know, generating 24-7 content to for a radio station or for a TV station can't really be that easy. You know, it, you've it's a constant rolling target of being able to keep that stuff produced so that you can play it. Yeah, I've been learning about radio automation. Yeah. Um, because I'm planning on starting a kind of a podcast streaming radio station for people to be able to like jump into the stream and discover a new podcast. Hey, that sounds like a cool idea. Um, so I've been learning how to use Rivendell, which is a open source radio automation package, and learning about cool. okay. clocks and logs and events and carts and all the you know like the radio terminology of you know we're learning how it picks the music to play and. You know, artist separation. So if I play an artist, I want to wait, you know, 20 songs before I play this artist again. And Yeah, I remember reading or hearing people talking about that as well. And and, and the uh, it's really important as well for those radio stations where they, you know, they you get money if you get to hear, see the same song played twice for the, yeah. whatever, the no repeat work day or whatever it's mm. called. Yeah, so <laughs> it's really important to make sure you've got that set right. Yeah, that, that, that no repeat work day is just a marketing thing though because with like the professional 
radio automation packages like Zeta, which is what most of the New Zealand stations use. Right. It's impossible for the song to play twice unless you tell it to. Well, that's what they're doing is they're telling it to. So yeah, exactly. You, you can, so yeah. it gets people to listen. It does. Yeah. Yeah, they're good at that, aren't they? I, yeah. I hate the morning shows when they say, oh, we're going to talk about this, and then the next voice break, it's, oh, we're still going to talk about this, so we're in the next, you know, after this, and then after that, then I'll go, and we're going to talk about this after this. And yeah, and then you're like, ah, oh, but now I've finished my commute, so I'm never going to hear it. Or it's, I'm still lying in bed 45 minutes later, <laughs> and I waiting need to for get them, up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, that's really mean, but, you know, it's marketing, it's the way it works. So Yeah, maybe we have to talk about radio as well, because I was kind of looking at, like, low-power FM and stuff the other day. Hey, yeah. But low-power FM transmitters are not cheap, like 500 bucks or something. Yeah, well. Yeah, they're not, they're, I mean, they're not cheap, that's right, and being able to do it properly is... is uh, the main thing so you don't blow your equipment up <laughs> yeah or you don't get the um get the authorities knocking on your door because you're transmitting on the wrong frequency or too with too much power well, you or didn't have your like license that. organized yeah <laughs> you don't don't need a license for low power fm in new zealand oh, okay that's cool um you can transmit up to a watt on a certain set of frequencies without a license as long as you don't clash with the guy down the road yeah or well, actually you could clash with the guy down the road but you'd get that knock on the door <laughs> yeah you'd get the the main thing is that every uh, two hours you have to broadcast who you are and how to contact you. Ah. Yeah. Right. Well, there you go. Yeah, so something I was looking at going, hmm. <laughs> well, I, don't, I might as well wrap it up there, I think. I think so. We keep sort of rambling now and not, yeah. <laughs> not, not really staying on topic, but uh, at some point in the future, I'm sure we'll, Dan will mention he's uh, done a studio tour to show you what's involved and and there'll be one of them, which is the picture behind the behind the mixer. Yeah, that's all the, the cables. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, that the cables are actually pretty good behind the mixer. Yeah, it's because they're all hidden inside that box. <laughs> 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 You're telling all my secrets. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Dan. See you, folks, next time.